first, though, our torchbearer on the road to 2030, UN Deputy Secretary General, Amina J. Mohammed. Madam DSG, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Excellencies, our Secretary General of the Interparliamentary Union, Martin Chungong, distinguished panelists, as I have next to me, and a brother here. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a special shout out I would like to make to the young guests that we have in the room. It's really good to see you here and engaging with us, and I hope you'll have some robust questions too. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and um, let me just thank the UN Democracy Fund for actually bringing us together. We often had discussions about what kind of a forum could we convene um, to discuss what is an incredibly important issue in our times today. Since the signing of the UN Charter, democracy has been a core concern for the UN, for it is perhaps the most fundamental building block for advancing peace, human rights, and development. But today, I think we can all agree that democracy is being challenged worldwide. Human rights are being sidelined in favor of populism and intolerance. In many places, the ability of private interests to influence elections is unfettered, and the capture of state by elites is warping the functions of state institutions. In some quarters, the very relevance of the rule of law as a springboard for sustainable development is being questioned. The time, I believe, has come to talk openly and frankly about democracy, to reestablish what we mean by it, and to better understand how we respond to today's threats, including through our work on SDG 16, which perhaps was the most hard fought for goal, understanding that no matter what we try to do without strong institutions, the rule of law, and the respect for human rights, the rest would not stand. Excellencies, the questions of what constitutes democracy is an important yet a complex one. Theoretical debates go back millennia and practical debates have been ongoing since the founding of this organization. A country's democracy, after all, is a reflection of a history and a culture, and no history or culture is the same. Each country must therefore design a governance model that best reflects its culture and needs. It must administer matters of representation and justice in a manner fit for its people. Too often, for example, democracies have been simplified down to holding free and fair elections. Critically important as free elections are, democracy about much, is much more about than this. Over time, we have come to see democracy as the building of state institutions that reflect the will of the people they govern, with fair and balanced rules determining the relationship between them, between people and state, as well as between state institutions and themselves. The will of the people must always be respected. Checks and balances must be in place to prevent those in power from servicing only those who elected them. Once in power, all leaders and institutions must be inclusive, responsive to the needs of all people under their jurisdiction all of the time. Democracy is therefore a political system that is not just built on public participation and representation alone. It is also built on the equal treatment and respect for all. It needs a commitment to safeguard people's rights and their human dignity. It is this expression of democracy that we find enshrined in the articles of the International Human Rights Covenants and in Target's SDG 16. They call for inclusive and non-discriminatory state institutions, justice, and the rule of law. These are the ingredients of democracy and of a path to ensuring human rights and sustainable development. Yet for us, less than four years after world leaders agreed to the critical importance of achieving SDG 16 for the overall goal of sustainable development, some of the key principles in this goal are being challenged and undermined in deeply concerning ways. In far too many countries, ethno-nationalism is growing, as is hate speech, intolerance, discrimination, and violence against those perceived to be different or other, and they're all on the rise. Another worrying development is shrinking civic space. Around the globe, civil society organizations report an increasing number of cases in which legal and political barriers are suppressing and weakening civil society's voice. This is a major driver of diminishing trust between people and the state, and it does risk halting and even reversing progress towards the kind of inclusive participation called for in SDG 16, Target 7. Moreover, the, protect, the protection of freedom of expression is being threatened by violations of the safety of those who gather and report information in public, 
principally our journalists, media workers, and human rights defenders. Media freedom, journalist safety, freedom of assembly, not to mention an independent and effective national human rights institution in accordance with the Paris principles, are all prerequisites for meeting SDG 16 target six and establishing effective, accountable, and transparent institutions. These three elements in SDG 16, inclusion, information, and accountable institutions, reflect some of the key ingredients of democracy. But a focus on SDG 16 alone will not make the cut. If we see democratic disenchantment in many places around the world, it is also because, in some cases, democracy has not fully delivered on its promise of a more prosperous and stable future. Job creation, strong education, and health for citizens and all citizens that need greater justice. In other words, achieving sustainable development in a way that leaves no one behind is critical to the social contract at the basis of our democracies. Excellencies, colleagues and friends, many people today are deeply frustrated by growing inequalities and find themselves ill-prepared for the sweeping changes of globalization and technology that, has, that have been brought into their societies. They do not believe that those in positions of power really have their interests at heart. And in the face of protracted conflicts going unresolved, a climate emergency going unanswered, and corruption and injustice repeatedly met with impunity, they genuinely question the ability of democratic process to deliver the change that is needed. As we gear up for five major summits in September and prepare for a decade that will make or break the SDGs, we urgently need to find a response to these trends, one that we can gain the trust in our institutions of the people that we serve. Allow me to kick off things with what I see as three key aspects of that response. First, that we must unite and bring decision-making closer to the citizens. We need to update our model of democracy through representation to ensure more vibrant and dynamic governance models that reflect the realities of the 21st century. We should find ways to facilitate and support civil society and then engage global and, public, global and public, uh, local public. The youth and children's climate emergency movement is among the most inspiring initiatives on the global scene today. But to protect democracy and achieve the SDGs, we will need to see more activism, more engagement, one that couples a push for people with a push for our planet, built on the foundations that we see in Goal 16. New technologies are offering great opportunities for citizens' participation in public life. New information technologies can also damage democracies if not well managed. We need to harvest the potential of technology to ensure a more participative and vibrant democratic system. Second, we must do more to build trust in our societies. That means listening carefully to the concerns of the communities that feel threatened by change or left behind by a changing economy. It means enacting policies and laws that respond to the inequalities and sense of impunity that are undermining social cohesion. We also need to walk the talk in our own institutions, whether on gender parity, sexual harassment, inclusion, transparency and accountability. Indeed, this is why the Secretary General has advanced reforms these past two and a half years, looking at both about how we can achieve results on the SDGs, but also internally, how we can be more fit for purpose to carry out that responsibility. In the end, it is about how we live up to our core values. Third, we must ensure that democracy delivers more. While critical in its own right, the value of democracy is greatly diminished if it does not deliver peace, prosperity, freedom, and security for everyone. All of us in positions of power, all of us working in the institutions of democracy, must therefore focus much more on delivering results. We must also do much better at communicating those results to counter the alternative facts and increasingly loathsome rhetoric and bigotry that we see in our social media and elsewhere. Excellencies, colleagues and friends, the UN Charter begins with the words, we the peoples. And it speaks to development in larger freedom. We must carry those words forward when we work to advance the SDGs and to, vet and to defend democracy. The great theorists remind us that democracy is a work in progress. 
Let us continue to work together to forge new alliances, to build institutions that are reflective and inclusive of our societies. It is our best chance to ensure decisions and policies that truly leave no one behind. Let us continue to push for these fundamental principles found in the 2030 Agenda, our best chance for a future of prosperity, peace, dignity, and democracy. Let's stand up and speak out for forms of democracy, justice, and inclusion that reflect and defend the rights of all peoples. I thank you.